Welcome everybody. I'm glad you could join us today for another one of our workforce development grant staff training workshops. As you know, or I hope you know, there will be more of these in the future. Um, and it's part of our grant project where we'll be partnering with a number of uh, local organizations to help people find jobs. And uh, one of those partnering org organizations is Cabrillo College. And I am pleased to introduce Desha Staley Ratia, Rat Ratior. I Ratior. Oh, said it right. Rat Ratior. Right? Yep. Okay. okay. And with her, um, we have Serena Fetterman. Um, Desha is the Director of Career Development. And I will let um, her introduce Ser Serena. Thanks for being here, folks. Yeah, thanks for having us. Good morning, everybody. Um, Serena, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself as well? Are you able to unmute? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Desha. Um, I'm Serena Fetterman. I'm a job developer and an adjunct faculty at Cabrillo College. So I help students find jobs on and off campus prep them for interviews and help them with any job placement skill support that they need on the, on the job or even before they're in the job. All right, thanks. I'm gonna go ahead and, and share my screen and hopefully you know how things work that everything's gonna cooperate. That's the plan at least on this do present mode. All right, can everybody see that screen? Yeah, that looks great. Okay, perfect. All right, so we, there's obviously a lot that we could talk about in regards to what Cabrillo has to offer. So I, I wanna just preface this by saying this will be a lot of content that we're sharing. We're doing very surface level at this point. And then if at another time we need to dive in deeper, we can do that. But today, basically what we're gonna cover is a career technical education, free career skills classes that we offer, adult ed, dual enrollment. We want to highlight a short-term program, the IT Institute, and then we're going to talk about in general what my office provides as far as services for our current students and alumni, so you'll be familiar with that. Uh, feel free to ask questions as we go through here, and then Diane, if you don't mind watching the chat, I do find that if I try and go into the chat, uh, my my screen freezes. So if you could just uh, you know stop me as we're going through this, that would be great. All right. Sure. Thank you. All right. So as most of you know, there's kind of two different paths that people would take. Two main ones, I should say, for Cabrillo. Um, and so, and I'm going to talk about dual enrollment a little bit later. But the first one is really, um, you know, you go to Cabrillo, you're looking for a career, and so you're getting very specific in that field of study. It could be a certificate um, or a short-term program, and then you want to get a job, right? The second one is you're going in with a plan of transferring to a four-year, right? So there's a different path for that. But those are really the two ones that we see folks come into Cabrillo for. And one of the great ways that people can do this is through our career technical education programs. So it's a mouthful there. And sometimes you'll hear it referred to as uh, career education. And so what I wanna do is just kind of highlight some of the benefits of what that is and share some of the programs that we have. And again, I'm not gonna get into detail on each of them because there's so many, um, but give you a, a basic overview of that. So these CTE um, courses, the benefits of them is there are some that have these very short certificates that it will take six months for you to complete. Um, and for those folks, some of those are coming in, they're reskilling or wanting to add to the skills that they have for their current position. Um, and some of these will provide opportunities for new entry level positions, right? So they're very short term. They can get in and get out um, and get an, a new opportunity after that. Uh, the other thing to note is CT graduates typically earn an average of 58% more than their previous job after they've completed. And again, that's for those short-term certificates as well as the longer-term uh, programs. And then the other piece about these with the benefits is they allow for flexible scheduling and, and uh, work-life balance, right? A lot of times 
Many of our students are working either part or full time and have families. And what we found is a lot of the class schedules make it very feasible for them to do those program programs while they're doing all the other things that they're responsible for. All right, so just an, a little bit more detail on the CTE program. So I did mention that they have these short term certificates um, or skills certificates, and then they have something that's a few more classes and that's a certificate of achievement. You could do a two year degree um, where you complete it and you're not planning on transferring, but you can also do one a two year degree that's CTE focused that helps you transfer to a four year. Right? So there's a lot of different pathways for people depending on what their needs are. Um, some of these, they offer academic and career oriented classes. They will help prepare students for a really a wide range of options and skills, um, increasing that wage as we mentioned. And then many of these are very hands-on. So when we go over the list in just a few minutes, you're gonna see that a lot of these are the types of jobs where people are using their hands, right? Um, and, and many people prefer that, right, when they do that. So here is the current list of 24 CTE programs. And I will say this is continually growing. I think when I came in, um, I've been at Cabrillo for over five years. I feel like we were at 20 or 19 or 20. So we've definitely been expanding as we go. And you can see there's all these amazing options, right? We've got culinary arts, biotechnology, the community health worker is a newer one. Um, and again, that's a short term uh, certificate program that they could be done within a year um, and getting some great opportunities out in the, in the field. Uh, dental hygiene is a very popular one. Um, and I would say there's a wait list for that one, but it, it is certainly a popular one. Uh, the other one, fire technology, a great resource for folks, EMT. Again, that's a short program that people can do. So there's a lot of variety here. The nursing one is another one and medical assisting that, um, again, there's usually a wait list for those, um, but they are in high demand and there's a lot of great jobs out there for folks afterwards. So again, these are just an overview of the different types of programs that we have. And if we wanna dive into those at a later date, we can do that. Oops, go back there. All right, I wanna to touch on adult education pathways. So for adult ed, this is anyone 18 and over. You do not have to have a high school diploma or a GED to be a part of this and take courses. Anyone is welcome and citizenship is not required, right? And many of the students that fall into this category are taking ESL courses or job training classes. Um, and so I wanna share some of the non-credit options that people might take. Okay, so these are, uh, other thing I want to mention is we refer to non-credit courses. So non-credit courses are free for students to take. There is no fee at all, which is amazing. Um, and many times we look at these as an entry point for students that maybe they're not ready to dive into a full certificate or a degree at Cabrillo. They wanna kind of dabble or, or get their toes wet as we'd say. Um, and so these are some really great opportunities for folks just to check it out and see what they think. Is this a good option for them? So as I mentioned, we have some non-credit ESL courses that folks can take. There are also some math courses that fall into that category. And a lot of times people are taking those because maybe they're um, not feeling ready for the first course that would count towards their degree or certificate. Um, and so they want to brush up on things before. And then below there, we've listed career skill and training courses. Some of these training are, are actually training certificates. So again, those short term ones. And you can see there's a great um, list of options there, really diverse things for people to check out with those. And again, I don't want to go into detail on each of those, but these are options for folks. And you can see many of them are just two classes, right, that they need to take. All right, I'm going to have Serena jump into the career skills courses that we offer. Thanks, Desha. As Desha mentioned, the non-credit classes are tuition free. So um, students can sign up for these at low stakes. So there's no financial obligation from the college. They're literally free to take. You simply have to go through the CCC apply 
and become a student at Cabrillo, which is also a great segue for them um, to get into other courses in the future, perhaps meet with a counselor and find an academic path. So those non-credit classes are a great way for students to just um, dabble in college. If they're not sure they wanna commit, it's a, it's a great opportunity. They can learn about Canvas, which is our online um, platform where teachers share um, knowledge and a lot of classes are, are actually taught through um, Canvas. And they can learn about the different resources on, on campus as well as um, what it's like to be a student and maybe work full time, et cetera. So some of those courses are geared towards career skills, specifically these courses in the DMCP department, which is digital management and career preparation. We have four classes dedicated to um, interview preparation, um, resume design, networking skills. And we also have a couple classes geared towards workplace skills. So those soft skills that employers are always looking for that we always value in our coworkers, that ability to communicate, to feel like you're being listened to, um, that ability to work in a team, to collaborate. Those are the 21st century skills that employers are looking for that we hear from employers all the time that um, they need those skills to be reinforced in the classroom before students um, even look for jobs. So we've created these non-credit short-term classes. They're only eight hours. They can be taught or taken online. We also are offering them now in person again. Um, so we're giving students options. I can help students register for these classes and, and get them on board if they're not sure how to do that and, um, and help them learn these skills and then go back into the workforce if they're already in the workforce or help gear them towards a counselor to talk about other options at Cabrillo, such as the ones Desha mentioned um, before in the previous slide. Can I interrupt you with a question? Yes. So I'm um, going back to those non-credit courses. Is, are there uh, materials or book costs? No, mostly um, the non-credit cl classes, we really try to keep them cost-free. So they would Great. be free of cost. The, some of those certificates on the previous slide, um, there may be some, I know like the infection control class for um, dental hygiene, there might be some costs associated with that. Next slide. So just getting back to the different ways students can get onboarded onto Cabrillo, into Cabrillo, dual enrollment is another option for students. And this is for students who are in high school or did um, graduate from high school and they're in adult education trying to finish their GED. So these students um, have resources at Cabrillo that they can utilize. They can take classes at Cabrillo as well as at, um, call, at their high school. And I know that some students were really interested in this during the pandemic, for example, um, you know, they were doing all their high school classes online. So they thought, oh, I have time to take some classes at Cabrillo too. So students who are finishing up and they only take a few classes in their senior year at high school and they're ready to start that college level content. This is a great opportunity for them. Yeah, I just want to add that these are free for students to do, right? So, um, and you can start doing them as even your junior year of high school um, for folks. And many times what they're taking, the credits can count towards high school graduation as well as towards college. So basically getting double um, and they don't have to pay for it. So um, pretty great way to be able to do it, I think, if they're wanting to, to dive into that. I do want to add the, the second side of this where it says the pathway for dual enrollment. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about that. That has more to do with um, pathways that we have partnered with the PV and uh, Santa Cruz City Schools on. And it's really more, they're, they're in development, right? So they don't have a whole lot of options right now. But these are courses that um, are articulated um, into Cabrillo. Um, so again, that's more of a a group effort and then the individual dual enrollment is for students just on an individual basis, however they want to do that. Did you want to add any more, Serena, on that one? No, I think that covers it. Okay. All right, I think this one's yours. 
Sure. So just to reiterate, when students come to Cabrillo, a lot of the things they mention to us, uh, one of the things they mention frequently, I should say, is how wonderful all the services are so that they weren't expecting that. They came from a different college and they didn't get this much support. We um, have a lot of specialized programs for students. We have the Welcome Center where students can um, go in and literally ask any question and get help right in the center of our campus. We have the Accessibility Support Center. This is for students who have learning differences. They can get assessed, they can get approved, they can get supplies that they need um, to, to succeed in their classes, such as extended uh, time for test taking, a note taker, um, special scribe pens, and other services to help them feel successful in college level classes. We also, also have academic counseling. We have um, several, I mean, I think it's maybe 20 or so counselors that students can meet with that are there, I mean, have appointments all day long for students to come in and talk to them about their career goals, their academic goals, their challenges, and their um, any question about career paths. They can come see them multiple times. There's no limit to the times, amount of times they can come talk to an academic counselor. And these counselors are trained on all the different rules about where they can transfer, what, um, uh, what units they need to have, what prerequisites they need to have, what different options they have for different career paths. So we have a couple more questions. Sure. Uh, first, does Cabrillo offer any online computer programming courses that high school students could take? So in terms of online classes, that would be in the schedule of classes and that changes. I know we're looking to do, keep a lot of our classes online moving forward, but we're also having classes in person. So it depends on their preferences. And that would be in our schedule of classes, which we just published the spring schedule on Monday online. Great. And then how young can students be? It said 18 previously. Yeah, the 18 was for adult ed, but um, high school students, you know, we've had, I've had a 14 year old that I dealt with uh, once that was taking classes here. So it, it basically they have to get permission from their counselor at their high school, um, as well as through Cabrillo and then parents, right? So between those three, they have to approve it and just make sure that um, it's okay for the student to attend. But I have seen as young as 14. Well, and Sarah, um, our wonderful Zoom czar, says that her son has been in dual enrollment since his freshman year. So that's great. Yeah, that's yeah, impressive. Think, yeah, a lot of students that like if they are really excelling <coughs> and kind of ahead of folks, especially when you talk about math and those type of areas, um, I find students are jumping in much younger. Great, thank you. Were, that all, were those all the questions? Yeah. Okay, great. We also have um, some high schools on campus. I think, do we have a slide about that? We don't have a slide about that, but oh. uh, Oasis and Delta are both located on our campus. Mm -hmm. So those students will take classes at Cabrillo as well as classes within their school. Yeah, especially Oasis. I find that they're, they're doing quite a few. All right, I'm gonna jump to the next slide then. Okay. So this is the IT Institute. This is something we started last year. It's a short-term wraparound um, institute of a few classes that are taught all uh, together in the, at the same time. And students are taught IT support fundamentals, including hardware and software, troubleshooting, as well as customer service, networking, operating systems, system administration, automation, and security. So that's a lot. It's in 11 weeks. This really trains them to um, enter a new career path. So we had students last year in this program who were um, security guards, and then they became IT specialists. And we also offer with those courses, career skills classes, those non-credit classes I was talking about at the same time. So they're learning how to be successful in the workplace, as well as design a resume and prepare for a job interview. This program is starting in January, and it's, as I said, 11 weeks, and um, classes are generally in the morning, 9 to 2, 
And there's some flexibility with that. They really try to work with folks and their, their schedules. I understand people are also oftentimes having full-time jobs already. There's a lot of info sessions that are going to be starting up soon, I believe mid-November, where folks can learn more about that. And there's a website that you can um, register for some of those info sessions to get more information. I want to add to that um, anyone interested in this is required to go to one of the info sessions. So there's no prerequisites, which is amazing, right, for this, this amazing program, but they do have to attend one of those uh, prior to registering. So again, the website has all the, the details on that. Um, and this was an exciting one that we did. We just rolled it out the first time last spring and had, I think, 13 students. Serena, does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. um, they were shooting for 30. And so, again, they have slots for, I believe, 30 students uh, for this. So really great opportunity for folks. Another one that we didn't highlight here, but I want to mention, um, because I haven't heard if it's happening in the spring, is we have a Salesforce one um, that has, again, similar kind of format to this. Um, so that could be another option if people are wanting to, to learn more about that. We could share information as we as we find out if they're going to be doing it in the spring. And okay. I'm sorry, I forgot. Was this a free um, program? Or is uh, there a free thing with this? Yeah, it's not free. Um, they do have to pay for certain units. I know for Serena's portion, I mean, those classes are non-credit, but the other ones are not. Right, Serena? Right, there's about uh, I think four or five units associated with the um, the IT class, and then the CG fifty one class, which is like a um, college success course, and that's one unit. So it's about five units, I think, and units equate to dollars. I think I don't remember what the current rate is per unit. I'm not sure either. It's so not it's too good. high. <laughs> it's a good yeah, year. and. And then there's also financial aid. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. And I don't know if you all know, but um, in the state of California, there's it's called the Promise Grant. So for your first two years of college, if you income qualify, are free by the state of California. And it's a it's a just an application you fill out in our financial aid office. And also Cabrillo has their, it's a little confusing. They have the Cabrillo Promise Grant and that is for local high school students that if they graduated from a local high school in the county, um, definitely their first year is free. Um, and second depends on the funding, right? So the last two years, we were able to fund the second year for students as well. So you have two different options for that um, and pretty amazing opportunities there. All right, I, this is our last slide. We're getting through this much quicker, but I do want to share our website in just a minute too after I talk about this. So for my, um, my office and the work that we do, I wanted to just highlight the different services that we can provide students and alumni. So you're familiar with this. Again, these are not open to the community unless you are enrolled at least, I mean, one unit and you could get access to this. But we have an online job board for uh, both students and alumni that post on and off campus positions as well as internship opportunities. And then we do workshops. So we will go into the classrooms. Uh, we also do campus wide workshops so anyone can attend um, on resumes, interview skills. We do a LinkedIn workshop. And then when we do our career or job fairs, we offer a how to prep for a job fair workshop. And then after, ideally after students attend these workshops, if they are needing more individual support, our team can meet with them to fine tune their resume, um, to help with a job or internship search. Uh, we do mock interviews with them as well. So, and even LinkedIn profile, they need to kind of fine tune that. We can do individual work with them. And then as far as career fairs or job fairs, we offer a number of those throughout the year. We just partnered with Access to Employment for a countywide job fair at the Boardwalk this last, uh, about two weeks ago. Um, had a, a pretty nice turnout for the market. As you all know, it's a little strange right now, but we had 32 employers and 93 job seekers attend. So we were pleased with that, uh, knowing it's, it's been a little strange. And then in the spring, we offer career fairs as well. I will say with COVID, it's been interesting. Last year, we had four virtual hiring events that were very well attended. Um, and then the years before, we have traditionally done an on-campus 
one on-campus career fair in the spring with about 65 local employers. These events are open to the public. Any of our job fairs are open to folks, although we don't tend to market it heavily outside the campus community. Um, locals are, are welcome to attend. We're figuring out our plan since things are still in flux. I think this next spring, we're gonna have a combination of both in-person and virtual. So we'll see what that looks like. And then we partner with faculty and different folks on campus to do employer panels throughout the year. And then our office obviously has to build relationships with local employers so we can create internship opportunities for our students as well as um, get them connected to jobs after they complete their degrees and their certificates. Um, so the employer side is, is really an important piece as well. And then I wanna share our website in just a minute and show you some great resources that you can access there. If you have any questions, we can obviously, you know, Serena and I, you can reach out to either of us. We also have our main email, which is studentjobs at cabrillo.edu. So I'm gonna stop sharing this for a minute because I find things are freezing. And uh, any, any questions right now before I jump into our website really quick? No, I just saw that Serena posted her contact information. Thank you for that. Great. Okay. Oh, it's not, I knew it was going to do this. This is what it likes to do. Hang on a second. Exit out. Okay, here we go. So uh, to find our career services website, if you go up to academics and go to career services, you will find us. And then I just wanna highlight what we have here. So for employers, they can post jobs on our job site and then students, they could register for it. And again, alumni are welcome to do that as well. And then we've got these different areas that we cover in regards to career services. Kind of the explore version, right? So I, I believe, did you have MBEP come in and already talk about career coach, Diane? Yes, we did. Okay, great. So Career has their own version of career coach. It, ours is actually connected to our program. So when people dive in to look at different career paths, um, they can get in there and look at the different options that Cabrillo has to offer. Um, and it has the resume builder and all those pieces you can actually use ours as well. Uh, it's open to anyone. You don't have to be a student to use that. But this explore side, so we offer career assessments. Um, these are for current students uh, that our counselors can access and, and, and basically they pay for it and they meet with a counselor to go over that. And then we have the career readiness side, which I'll highlight more in just a minute. And then we have our employment and internships. So I'm just gonna jump over here really quick. The exploration side, this is where we talked about how you can choose your major, the career assessments, right, through the bookstore, and career coach tool is here. So those are all accessible for anyone to use. And then this career readiness is what I had talked about uh, my office does as far as support. So if a student does want that individual support, they can click on this form um, and it comes directly to our staff and then we'll schedule a time to meet with them. But this talks about all those different resources I said that we, we provide um, and then they can link to those. The employment and internships. This will give you get you to the job board, more information on internships for students, our job fairs and uh, working on campus for them. And then Serena just developed this page for our career development classes. So this is a newer one that we've posted. So this talks about the CG courses that we have. We have a work experience course. So internship, if you wanna get credit for it. And then these uh, career skills certificate classes are the ones that Serena talked about. So we have those, that detail there. And then and let's just CG, quickly, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. CG means counseling and guidance. Yes. Maybe I'll, I'll write that out so people know. Yeah, thanks. 
There's it's a lot not of different <laughs> short-term ways we talk about things. So counsel. Oh, you just went on mute. Nope. Counselors teach those classes so they can give students a lot of guidance. Right. All right, so again, these resources are free for everybody. We have these eBooks that people can access that are on here. Um, some nice resources there. And then we've got some great videos here um, that people can explore all different types of topics, again, related to our different categories of exploration, readiness, and employment and internships. So you can find those here, right? So there's a podcast. If you're familiar with Your Future is Our Business, they have that. And then we've got, this is actually a really um, interesting tool that I, I encourage you to explore. It's Candid Career, again, free for anyone to access. This has a lot of videos from people that are in different industries giving career advice. So some really cool stuff there. And again, it's accessible for everybody. And you can find that link. That's just one video from there. But if you go down to career web resources, you will see all these options here, right? So we have the candid career that I mentioned, career coach. These are some other tools you can use um, for the career coach. Again, the resume builder is on there. And then these are some different uh, search engines for folks wanting to job search. All right, so that is our presentation for the day. We actually got through it much quicker than I had planned. Um, but again, I didn't wanna get into a lot of depth in these areas. And I think after this, Diane, if you feel like there's an area that you wanna dive into deeper, we can do that. Um, and come back and, and, and bring the people that are specializing in those areas. That sounds great. Thank you. And, and Dasha, uh, I have a question. So <laughs> the one thing I've noticed about dual enrollment is that the books are not free and neither is one of the math programs, Alex, that the teachers require. At least I think it's Alex. Is there assistance on those materials? I mean, they're college co prices. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I have understood that, yeah, books, they do need to pay for. Um, they do have book, kind of, I don't want to say book vouchers, but it's usually, they have limited funds that uh, the Senate helps divvy up at the beginning of each semester. And that could be something if students pay attention, the trick is pay attention to your email <laughs> that goes out um, and announcements because they usually announce those things the first couple weeks of school. Um, so it's not usually right before, it's usually within the first couple weeks of school. Um, and then they can um, try and get access to that those funds. And sometimes there's up to 50 or $75 uh, gift certificates to the bookstore through that program. Great, thank you. Yeah, good question, Sarah. I know, because books are so expensive. Well, and they're not even books. They're just online access for one year. So you can't even resell it and recoup any of your money. Uh, right. I think his Spanish book was two years, but yeah, they're not, some of them aren't real books anymore. Well, and I do know that our CTE, our career technical, um, no, career, what's the, I'm sorry, Serena, what is it? It's our computer lab, the CTC. Oh yeah, Computer Technology Center. Yes, thank you, <laughs> having a moment. Um, they should have, and also our math learning center should have access to those as well. So if people, if it's cost is prohibited, you can go into those locations. I know it's not ideal, but those are resources as well for folks. And speaking of the math, I will say that you, the Math Plus program, is it Math Plus where they go into the math? Yeah. That is an amazing program. So for any staff who uh, are listening, if you work with high schoolers or college kids, that, that is such an amazing program. If you've been maybe out of, you know, math for even the summer, you can go back in and they, they were amazing. So thank you yeah. for that program. Just to give you a little more. So what happens is the week before the semester starts, they offer these math intensive courses. So depending on what you're, you know, needing to brush up on, um, people go and, and there's a whole, they have a large number of folks. I've never heard of them turning anybody away. Um, in, if you need to get this access and it really helps. I've had student staff that have done it before when they, they haven't taken math for a while and they wanted to brush up 
um, and they just speak so highly of it. So I really encourage folks to do that. You can sign up in advance for those. I'd just like to mention to library staff that uh, part of the collaborative grant does have some funding for educational reimbursement. So for those people who maybe are able to take advantage of some of these Cabrillo um, offerings, but don't have the funds and for some reason um, are not eligible for enough financial aid to make it possible, um, you know, we're we are going to have a little bit of funding for that. That could go to books. Um, it could go to the actual tuition for a class. Um, you know, anything like that. We're also providing bus passes so that people can get around. Um, and um, we'll have a few laptops and hotspots for people to use as well. So um, I just wanted to add that. And yeah. thank you so much. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? About I had a question about the financial aid for high school students. Yeah, my understanding, and I don't do not totally quote me on this, and we can find you know figure this out for sure. Is she was saying they can't apply for financial aid? Usually, no, right? Because the tuition is free for high school students, so there wouldn't be any other costs. And the assumption is that they're living at home with families, so they don't have those other expenses. Um, there could be special circumstances. I don't know with, for maybe foster youth and that type of thing, but in general for high school students, they're not paying tuition. Um, so they would not be uh, applying for financial aid. One of the uh, really popular programs too, um, just to give a little shout out is our, um, our business information worker certificate for folks who um, just want to brush up on skills to get into an office career. And it's a very supportive program. And they, you know, it's basic, you can learn how to use computers, learn customer service. And a lot of people really enjoy and find that that program really rewarding. If they're not sure, you know, I want to be a nurse or I want to be a, um, you know, a contractor. This is more just, I want to work, learn about professional skills and working in a, in a professional environment, it can be a great certificate. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. And it's very hands-on support with the faculty within that, that department. Mm -hmm. And that's under the CABIT, which is also another uh, acronym department. <laughs> so many. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions out there? I think you might be able to raise your hand or type in the chat. Well, while we're waiting to see if there are any other questions, one last thing is that I have put a link to a survey that is required by the um, California State Library and LSTA. Um, so please, everybody who has viewed this um, either live or later on when it gets posted um, for those who couldn't make it today, please take the time to take the survey. Um, it will really uh, help my grant reporting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so are there any other questions? And I'm happy to unmute you. Just raise your hand so I can find you. So far, we just have a thank you for the presentation. I've got some looking in to do. So thank you for providing such great information. More thank yous. So. Yeah, our pleasure. And just let us know if, if we need to dive in deeper. Yeah, well, thank you. This was very informative and I am really impressed with the depth and the breadth of career services at Cabrillo. So thank you for sharing this with us. And I am very positive that I will be asking you to go dive a little deeper on some of this so that sounds great thank and I, you. i'm also going to share you uh give you a copy of our powerpoint i know you'll have the recording but just so you have access to that as well oh excellent thank you so much when desha um, told me about this i thought it makes so much sense because i know people come in to use computers at libraries to look for jobs like i know that's a huge resource in the community for folks so 
Yes, and I've just heard some um, anecdotal information from some of our staff that a lot of people have been doing that lately, mm -hmm. um, coming in and getting, you know, and they're just trying to get some help. So I'm really excited about getting our grant project going and having that one-on-one -on -one assistance in the library that's devoted to this, um, you know, where we can refer people where they need to go and give people whatever help we can. So awesome. That's great. Yeah. Thank you for being our partner. Yes. Thank you for having us. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great day, everybody.